Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to do something a little different. I think this is going to be a regular feature here on my channel. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some devices, or in this case one device that was made by somebody else, and it's featured on uh, www.maxforlive.com. There's a great collection of devices over there. Uh, it's definitely worth becoming a member, signing up. Here's their here's their window. Um, and like I said, www.maxforlive.com. Lots of fantastic devices. A lot of a really really great way to get to know Max is by looking at other people's patches, kind of seeing what's going on. A lot of stuff that's on here is uh, uh, Creative Commons license, so you can reuse the stuff, build your own patches based on it. You can find, you know, kind of share things with the community, debug stuff, all kinds of great things. That's the nice thing about Max. One of the nice things about Max. And anyway, so I'm going to look at this uh, uh, a patch that another user there made. This is called uh, uh, Simple Parameter Sequencer. This is version 1.21 by Prebentius. Uh, his license here, he has none under here, so I don't know exactly. Uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't said, you know, it's copyrighted or whatever, so uh, I assume we can take a look at it and see how it works. So it kind of takes off uh, where... Sort of like the, the LFO, I mean, you, saw, you guys saw that one, that's a really great device. This one's really exciting because it's a step sequencer for parameters. So rather than just modulating them, you can modulate them according to steps. Like here, I have eight steps going on. If you watch the rate in my auto filter and kind of listen to what's going on, I have a high rank and kind of bass thing going on. And uh, it's modulating the parameter step by step. So I have these eight steps, and it goes from uh, eighth note to half note to quarter note uh, synchronization in here. So it's really fantastic. So if I wanted to say, you know, set up uh, on one of the, the later beats, you know, really, really fast modulation for, uh, you see, it's crazy like that. It's really, really powerful. So let me look uh, at how it kind of works here with you. First, the user interface. You'll see uh, I have a loop min and max. So you have up to eight steps, looks like here. Uh, and you can set it you know, to start on any particular step. You could start on step four, go through eight, and all that. But um, usually you're going to start on step one, and maybe just if you have a single step, two steps. And it is beat synchronized, so it's kind of awesome that way. You can set what the speed is, so whether each step is a whole note, half note, quarter note, down to a 30 second note for, for really short uh, steps. Quarter note works really well for kind of your dance driven dub step, you know. So, all you dub steppers out there are going to be on quarter note, likely. A lot of dance music stuff. And then you have a dial for each of the steps, and you just set the value. Um, and you can set, uh, I guess the dials by default, they're 0 to 127, but you can also map their range. You have a min. Uh, a min and max, and you can see the instantaneous output at, at any point as it's stepping through there. All right? So you can kind of customize it for most devices. Um, we'll, we'll see some stuff inside the patch actually later on that uh, kind of uh, probably rounds some things off. There's there's also this glide parameter. What glide does is it determines how uh, you want to look at the device, and it's not necessarily just switching hard between the steps. It can kind of glide, so it kind of interpolates values in between each of the steps as things go up and down. So if you watch my uh, rate knob over here, if I see the glide up, you see a lot more in between values, and it's kind of like really acting like there's a person twiddling the knob as opposed to just jumping between the steps here, like that is. Now, of course, like a lot of other devices, especially the kind of parameter modulation devices, you'll see um, here's the, uh, you know, choose what device it is. I've chosen auto filter, and I've chosen, say, frequency. But you could, you could set it to anything, of course. You set it to resonance. So you've got resonance modulating you know, per step. Fantastic, fantastic thing. I mean, this is, I mean, you know, I mean, LFOs are great. LFO, between the combination of the LFO and a step sequencer for, for parameters, I mean, this is killer, right? Okay, so let's look inside, because I know a lot of you guys want to learn about live, and the purpose of a lot of my stuff on my channel is to really learn, you know, we just don't want to just review these devices, and, you know, maybe that, maybe some people want to just check them out that way, but you want to see really what's going on. So I open up my live device, and I see presentation mode, so this, this uh, is set to, to show presentation mode by default. I click on my window uh, uh, icon and get it into patching mode, and I can see what's going on really great patch. It's all more or less on one page here. You can kind of see what's going on at, at a glance. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for uh, the sake of this and let's see if you can see a little bit better what's going on. All right, so let's see. Uh, it's a audio 
plug-in, that's nice because uh, this way you can use it on any track, because even MIDI tracks you can have uh, audio plugins for processing. That's that's kind of one nice thing about using uh, Max for Live audio devices for, for, for a lot of your parameter automation stuff, because it'll work on any track, really. All right, so what do we got going on? Uh, let's look up here. Let's start off. Uh, there's a metronome device. Um, and it starts up active and interval 10 ticks. So these are like uh, the, the default parameters that are being set to the metronome for starters. And then it divides that out into uh, using the transport device. Now, as you're doing any of this stuff, if you want to find out, you know, again, learn, if you're learning about Max, click on things and just go up here and select help, open transport help. I'm going to get the help window for that device. So here, controls a master clock and report time values. Oh, that's what transport is doing. You can see it, you know, Here's what all our parameters are doing, right? Here's a great example. It looks like, you know, this is probably where a lot of it came. You cut and paste. You can then, all the help files are even like, you know, you can grab this, cut it, paste it right into your patch. You're good to go. All right, so timing stuff gets set up here. Uh, so we have it uh, locked to our, our count or our clock. And then that is driving the step sequencer and, and the, another cool thing is there is built-in step sequencer devices in your live for max or max for live kind of stuff so you can like set up these things and then just fire them step by step a lot of that's already built in all right so this part we set up our minimum and maximum loop uh lengths here if i put it back into non-edit mode you can see it actually working here so I can scroll up and down, set the values, or here's the number boxes. All right, now watch this, ready? Right? You see how in presentation mode, it kind of shows you just what you want to know. So you just zoom in and out, and you can see what's going on. So, all right, there I'm setting that. We have some logic up here to uh, let your little numerical scrolls uh, do their thing. And then, uh, this guy here, okay, this guy is generating some messages, uh, and you can see this S. What S is is a send. It's kind of a, a little bit of a, a wormhole. It's a way to send something from one uh, part of the program to another. It's, it's sort of like a variable, but uh, you, basically for every S, and you'll see here's the name of the variable or the location, the other end of the hole. Uh, like here's set min. Somewhere there's going to be a R set min on here. Uh, scale min, scale max. Come on, where are you? Uh, scale min, scale max. Maybe inside of a patch that we're not being able to see here. Oh, wait, there it is. Huh. Send set min, receive set min. So just whatever's coming out of here, that's how it gets sent back up there. It just kind of goes into this set min uh, object, the S, and the receive gets it, sends it, puts it in there. So this way you just have lots of wires. You know, looping around lots of patch cords it keeps it from being a little bit messy. It can be a little trickier to follow because you have to look for where things kind of wind up, but that's what's going on there. So I can set my number of steps, and the steps here are pretty straightforward. They're pretty simple. They don't have a value on the step. Instead, they're, the step guy in this is really just driving this guy up here. Okay? There's some other ways to do it, and I think you could you could maybe accomplish the same thing all in one step uh, object instead of live, but hey, that's that's the way uh, Prevention did it, so we're going to you know stick with that. So, okay, as this comes up here, it gets a message that contains all the values from this guy, and it's going to cycle then through and set the, the uh, which ones are live and it kind of as it goes through. So you'll see if we actually start up live. It's cycling through here and uh, doing everything up here. Oh, wait, you know what? I think now that I see, he actually is setting those values in here. So there's a little, there's a little trickiness going on. All right, so, oh yeah, that's not connected. Huh, interesting. So the layout kind of threw me off. Um, so this really just lights these boxes, but the values on each step here, they are, yep, sure enough, that these values are getting packed in, prepended, and they set the values in this guy here. So that's that's what's going on. So this step sequencer really is running the show, and this is just a sort of an interface to that. Very nice, nicely done for prevention. Okay, 
Okay, so that triggers that, sets up the step sequencer, and then, okay, how does it, you know, change values? That's probably what's going on over here. All right. So we have values kind of then getting kicked out over here. They get scaled according to our range bar and our min or max. That's similar to what I had in my LFO thing, and uh, lots of people have used that one. Uh, I first saw it in Synax version of the LFO, uh, but I guess you know it's, it's shown up in different places. I don't know if it's his original code or, or somebody else's, but yeah, who knows. It's very cool, nice shareable piece of code. And what that basically does is it has a minimum and a maximum and a range slider, and so you can kind of set things. And, you know, that shows up nice, it looks nice in your patch. And then it scales it to the proper output value, and it comes down in here. Now, it looks like, what well, we have here? Scale max and scale min, it's receiving that from somewhere else. Okay, oh, oh down here. So there's a little bit of a, you know, again, kind of a loop around as it gets messages back from Max it has to receive them in and update itself to make sure it's, uh, knows, knows what's going on. So, uh, it, oh, oh, wait, let's see. Oh, the device remote, I think it is actually getting, ah, okay. So it's the device parameter remote is a value that's going to come back for the minimum and maximum value of that device. Um, so this 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 is a pretty smart uh, patch here. So if I look at this, let's, let's look at this object. This is one of the standard objects. This is uh, one of the Max uh, for live abstractions, the, the helper objects in there, to, or helper patches in there to help you out. So this will get a parameter for you, and it will give you the value, the and the minimum and maximum of it. So he's pulling that back in and using that to set his scale here, which is. The right way to do it. I, I, I better go back and change that in my LFO patch to, to do that as well, because I'm just assuming in mind that values are going from zero to one, which seems to work most of the time. But this is a better, you know, more explicit way to do it. That's that's nice. Okay. So uh, the the device, pr uh, yeah, device parameter remote is what's kind of calling the shots on a lot of this here. So it gets that value back. Um, these are also, I assume, if I look in here, the patchers for the Max for Live abstractions, the select device and the select parameter. And B patchers are basically ways to, to, you know, to call another piece of code, another patcher, into here as a, a block and uh, you know, can use it just graphically if you see a little bit of it. So these are calling the Max for Live abstractions. They set the values. This guy sets the parameter, and ultimately, if you look inside him again, he's the one that's calling live remote, which is what's sending the value. Uh, and this this patch here, we could spend another 10 minutes on just talking just about that one, but you know, save that for another one. Okay, so that's what's going on. He's setting a step sequencer up. He has a different value for each step. Uh, the metronome cycles through there. Or, you know, fires up our, our live set uh, live. Uh, step sequencer comes in here he's already got things set up as far as the parameter goes and then some, some scaling stuff uh, to, to bang out the parameters now what's going on here is this line okay now what line is doing I assume that's his, his glide over here right so as we glide between values what a line can do you can kind of interpolate between two points and glide is going to setting in his time on there, yeah, his ramp time in milliseconds. So that's how long in milliseconds it's going to take to go from one value to the next. See, so a line is a way to interpolate between two values. And you go ahead and you know, click on that guy, open, help, to learn about line. So the best, like I said, best way to learn Max is just to get in there, click on help, click on things, use the help functions, use the built-in tutorials. So this is an awesome uh, an awesome patch. I can't say enough cool things about it. Uh, especially you know if you're into that dubstep kind of automatic modulation stuff, set up some patterns where you're you know quarter note, half note, eighth note, you know modulating a filter like this, a like auto filter like I've got going on. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal patch. I give it you know two thumbs up. Uh, if I had more thumbs, I'd give it the, those two. All right, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go out, check out Max for Live. Uh, props to Preventious for putting this patch out there. Hopefully you learned something from it. Or just go ahead and use the patch. Have a great time. And hopefully I'll put more of these kind of review and under the hood uh, uh, tutorials and demos in, in my, uh, on my channel. So keep coming back and you can learn a lot about uh, how Max uh, in general works and how Max for Live works. Take care. Bye.